This is Richard back at you. We got Miss Teresa on the camera. We got Annie hanging out again, guys. It's rear end time. Just got through with uh, Billy's rear end in his 94 Chevy pickup. Got the truck delivered with a brand new tranny, brand new rear end. Got another one to do. So, Miss Teresa, would you tell us what uh, this rear end's fixing to be going into, what it come out of? So, uh, this guy, yeah, this guy, he brought this by. Um, so it actually came out of an 05 police cruiser Crown Vic. There you go. And he is going to put this in a 64 Galaxy. Galaxy. Yeah. And what's crazy is I believe it's got a big block Chevy in it mm. with a 4080 E-Tranny. So mm -hmm. that's kind of a kind of a crazy deal. But you remember what the 64 Galaxies look like? Kind of round fenders, round back. I mean, really cool looking car. Any car like that's cool nowadays, believe me. You know? Yeah. Uh, but he had to have this rear end narrowed, I believe, three inches on each side. Uh, we're going to be putting Mosier axles in it right here, hardened axles. Got them set in here. Now we're going to, uh, all new bearings, new gears, clean it all up, freshen it up, put it all back together. We're going to be checking the pause track, uh, uh, clutches and stuff in it too to make sure that they're nice. But if you want to check your pause track clutch, what you can do is you can stick a bar in the axle right here and you can come over here with another bar and you can grab it like this okay now the pinion is going to stay there but when i go to turn this axle it's going to give me some resistance and then all of a sudden it's going to try to let go but that's the once it lets go that's the clutch is slipping in the posi are you ready okay see that so you can't turn it and then all of a sudden the clutches slip they have to slip that way you can go around a corner because one wheel is traveling farther than the other wheel but you can see how you can test your clutches they got to have some drag if you just grab this and just spin it around like that nothing's there <laughs> then your posse's plumb wore out this posse actually feels really good for you know, I don't know how many miles on it but for being a police car and stuff you know yeah uh, you, you know, know how they drive yeah <laughs> You know, this, there's no telling how many miles, like I said, it's on this unit. But, you know, I do know here in Amarillo, they did do services on their cars. I mean, because we did their trainings for 20 years. Or yeah. We had a contract with them. So, but you can just see that drag right there. You can feel it. And then all of a sudden, <clears throat> there it goes. So let's get this thing apart and see what it looks like on the inside. Well, it's nice to have the mic back on. Yep. Not to cough my head off. Yeah, she's over her crud. Well, somewhat. To a certain I still, extent. Yeah, yeah, I still have that cough. I can't get rid of it. Now, he says this does have a 373 gear in it. But, well, that old gear's been hot. That's one dirty. Oh, uh, yeah. Whew. Man, you almost think that's been run out of oil, but as nasty as that looks in there. Yeah. Here and I talk about how they service their cars. Yeah, but you don't know where this came from. No, I don't really. There's no telling. Exactly. See the backlash right here? What we can do. Normally I do it. Let's see if I'll set it over here. Put it like I'm gonna have to normally I do it a little different. Let me turn this around, get it moving the way I want it and stuff, see if I can without it falling apart. Billy, I had to set it up different in Billy's rear end because I did it in the truck. So you take it, tighten that one down, tighten this one down. Basically, what you want is you want that to be setting on the ring gear, you want to come over here. If you don't watch this over here, Trace, on this side. Yeah, let me get over there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this on zero. And I'm going to move it. See that? That's got like 15 thousandths. Look at that. That's how you check your backlash. When I get done, I'm going to take and move this system this direction. And it'll be about an eight thousandths. I'll check it and see. I got a really cool book here too, guys, I want to show you that I, everybody that does rear ends needs it. I went and dug it out of my dinosaur bookcase. We keep everything. We keep everything. Makes it easier. These USA Standard Gear Company books here, Kit Installation Guide, this book right here is the best one 
that they ever made. And I don't know why uh, they quit making this page. But if you look here, this thing has every rear end made and it gives you pinion shim selected, what the OEM is. So just saying if this was an eight inch ring gear, eight and a half inch ring gear, it'll tell you what factory shim goes behind the pinion bearing. And then it tells you your backlash too, six to eight, six to seven, mm -hmm. eight to 11. This is a book from heaven right here. This one here, they did away with the pinion shim, the uh, shim that goes behind the pinion bearing. And that's a really a must because when you're changing gear ratios and stuff, uh, that gives you an idea where to start out at before you start uh, messing with it. But, but like I said, when we get done, that's going to move about to the eight, which is going to be about right in there. That's about max where we're going to put it. I set Billy's at eight right there. But you can see that's way out of hand. So pretty neat. Mm. Um, normally I have these rear ends turned over. And what I'm going for is this little eight millimeter bolt right here. Mm -hmm. Actually, I forgot to get my socket to even get that out of there. Get is this one gonna have the little keepers and stuff too? Yep, gonna have the same stuff. These bolts are usually locked tight at the end if it's done right. All right, it was loose, so I just barely put any pressure on it. So he might have been messing with us to start with, I don't know. Got your, right there. Anytime you put this bolt back in, you'll lock tight this bolt in there. You wanna make sure the end of this pin right here is good because this is physically what holds this pin in here. You want to check here for anywhere because your uh, uh, spider gears right here they are not they do not have a bearing the gear physically runs on the pin so if you got wear here and here then your, your gears can wobble on their mismatching when they have their uh, when they get under a big load and stuff like that because it's almost like a, a ring and pin still these gears have to mesh right but once you pull your pin out you can See that axle, I'm gonna push this one in. See that right there, that retainer? I'm fixing to grab that retainer right there. Hopefully. I well, mean, just grab them with a magnet. But, you know, that don't mean nothing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> nope. These will go either direction. You just want to look for to see if they're wore out. They need to be replaced. Push this one in. Same way, it's going to expose the keeper. Once you take these out, both your axles are going to come out. When you pull your axle out, you're going to instantly go to this area right here. And you want to see if you got pitting or anything right mainly right here this is where your bearings running this is just hardened grease that'll clean off where seal runs look good where the bearing runs look good no pitting but i don't like to use uh axle saver bearings but since but we're replacing those since we're replacing them but you know it's right. if you're not and you're going to go back with new bearings and run the same axles you want to look right there in that area Right here, you just want to make sure there's no pitting. Scott's brought it up real good. Put you some new bearings in there. Be done with it. The Mosier axles sure look nice, don't they? Mm -hmm. What do we got here? Oh, three quarter. Now I'm going to go ahead and mark these make sure we, they get put back in the right spot. On Billy's rear end, when I uh, 
mark the cap. And then I, when I went to put the rear end back together, uh, they, I found out a story on the rear end and um, they had the caps on the wrong sides. I couldn't even bolt it back together. So I always like to take and mark them. Put your dock there and dock there. Wonder how they got it bolted back together. I don't know. Since I'm shocked uh, the cap wasn't broken. Seriously, I thought the cap would be broken, cracked or somewhere. There's no way I could bolt it back down. You notice these have a, a, a chamfer right here on this side. You want to make sure you put the non-chamfer side towards the spacer. That way it holds it together. Okay, helps hold it in there. You just want to remember that. Well, this thing smells terrible. Of course, I just touched it to my nose, so that makes him smell even better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Have that for a it's while. Like, What's going on? <laughs> To wipe my nose off. Okay. Now this should be in there pretty snug. We we'll always like to set the the preload on the bearing right here. Not real snug, but enough you just can't pull it out. It's going to take some type of bar or something to pull it out. The other way, if you put it in there loose or too loose, uh, the load of the ring gear and the pinion trying to separate uh, changes the, the backlash tremendously. I mean, that's why you want to put it in there where it will not move under any type of load. That way that backlash uh, stays tight. Uh, Dodge diesels and stuff like that, any type of diesel, you better have a spreader and stuff to put it back in there. Of course, we have this shim here. These are uh, different thicknesses. You can mic them. I just keep everything separate. Once I mic them, I'll remember which side goes where. Because I'm actually tearing this rear down, rear end down, upside down. Normally, how I tear them down, but mm. like that. Of course, we're replacing all the bearings, but we never want to go back. You can see pitting and stuff on this one right here is starting to happen. Actually, it was just grease build up or something thought it was pitting but that's why you clean everything up and check yes it. you know the spacers we won't even use we'll have a shim kit that way we can move it to where we want to move it same here you take that uh ring gear off real quick You can see the Loctite on there. You always want to Loctite these bags. Take a punch and go down the center of the bolt hole. Some of them are pretty snug. Some of them will just fall off. But it's starting to move, so it's kind of work your way around it. Just about there. Almost there. 
Come on, huh? There we go. See what size ring gear we got in there. Just take a measure across it. Looks like we got about an eight and a half ring gear size. So it's going to be an eight and a half with a 10 bolt. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bolt. So when you go to the speed shop or wherever you're going to go get your gears at, you're going to tell them that. That it's an eight and a half and then with a, a 10 bolt. So then you want to have the car, what, Teresa, what, 90 model Mercury Caprice or 94? Oh, five. Oh, five. Where did I get? I got Billy's. Yeah, on you're my brain, still huh? on Billy's. Gun <laughs> over gone kaput. <sighs> so that truck got to me. I had to do a lot of work to that truck. It's crazy what that. 373 pinion looks like compared to this other thing and pinion. I'm gonna pull this out of there real quick. Is that Billy's old this, stuff? Yeah, this is Billy's old stuff right here. Being that the pinion, or the, excuse me, the yoke come loose, or the pinion all come loose, uh, we changed the gears out because I wasn't gonna take a chance of it whining. But that's a 373 supposed to be, and this is a 373. Look at the difference in the sizes. I'm going to count the tooth count, and let's see uh, what that is. We'll just put it in our notes. Teresa's got the phone to calculate it, so. But definitely a difference in the size. Almost, let's see, one, two, see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's a ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. <clears throat> eleven. Ten and eleven. 10 and 11, that's, we got it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, This is 11, too. 11, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This is an 11. Is it 11, too? This is 11. I count one, Start one. at the D and count okay. around, it's 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so that's the same, but isn't that weird how but the size is? But it's way bigger. Definitely different, huh? Mm-hmm. On your posi, basically you'd have to knock this retainer out that keeps the pressure on there, pull the spider gears out, and your clutches are going to be behind uh, each gear right here, each spider gear, the big ones. You got your small ones there. You want to make sure none of the teeth are broke off on these spider gears because I see that a lot. I get to use my big half inch drive electric impact. I haven't got to do that in a long time. Look at this. Hey, it worked. I'm impressed. It's supposed to. <laughs> you know, that's going to be tight. To ride out, isn't that nice? So I'm gonna clean that up really good. Try to leave that retainer on here. That tries it keeps all the dirt from getting in there close to the seal. But you definitely want to polish that. It's got this little oil slinger right there behind the bearing. Let me see if I can knock that out of there. when you shake like I do. Got an oil slinger or deflector. Kind of keeps more of the oil into the bearing instead of putting such a load over on the seal. Of course your inner race right here. It looks terrible. Look in there, Tracy. See that? How that's starting to some funny looking oh. movement right down through there. Yeah, I see that. 
I don't see no pitting, but definitely some funny looking movement. Of course, here you have your crushed sleeve. And you have your big pinion bearing. You got your small. Now your a selective spacer is going to be down in here. Just remember that. Now when I take this apart, I'll figure out what gear ratio it is for sure. I will mic that uh, selective spacer under there. And then I'll go to my book and I'll look in there and make sure that that is the right spacer behind that gear. Right here. Tells you which one the factory come out with. So if you're going from a 342 to 373, you can start out with this film right here. This is a really good book. Only one in the world that I got it. Still got, so, well, anyway, guys, we're going to get this all cleaned up, go to town to our favorite place in Amarillo called Amarillo Off Road. Really good company. If y'all need any four wheel drive stuff, go check them guys out. Tell Travis over there, we'll hook you up. Well, anyway, thanks for watching. I uh, want to thank Miss Teresa again on the camera. Don't forget to subscribe, push your notification bell, and See you next time. Have a great day.